I uh, want to welcome everybody. I want to welcome everybody to Good Morning Healsburg. We have uh, an exciting meeting today. The uh, people from the north end of town, the development up there, are going to be with us, kind of give us a preview of what's going on and um, answer questions as to that you may have as to the project. Um, we have with us uh, Rosemary Jordan, who's the CEO of Enzo Village, Ed Stepan. Uh, Skapanuk, I should have practiced that beforehand. Got it right. <laughs> Chief Commercial Officer for Appalachian. And uh, we will be having Kelly Comstock Ferris, who is VP of Sales and Marketing for the North Village and Comstock Development. We are going to, and I also want to acknowledge that we have uh, Ron Edwards and Evelyn Mitchell out there. I see, thought I saw your pictures. Thank you for joining us. And uh, Andrew Strumfels, Strumfels from the city. Um, Rosemary, let's get started with you on the Enzo Village piece. Yeah, well, thanks. And it's so great to see so many names and faces that are um, familiar on the screen. Um, if I haven't met you yet, my name is Rosemary Jordan. I am, uh, I call myself the chief bottle washer here with the Enzo team, but I, I seriously, I am the CEO and chief sustainability officer. Um, today, we're going to be talking about the whole North Village um, community, and it includes a number of different projects. It just so turns out ours is a little um, advanced uh, compared to the other one. So we're the part that's up out of the ground substantially right now that you see when you're at the north side of town. And um, my colleagues are going to talk about the other pieces that are going to come really, really soon, including Ed will probably talk about the hotel coming out of the ground uh, within within days. Um, but I, I do want to just share a, a, a little bit about what's going on with, with Enzo Village, if that's all right. Um, so uh, we, we reached a really important milestone this week. Uh, you've been watching this project go from um, its infancy to this past winter, I called it the adolescent stage of um, construction with the acne and the really bad hair, and we're so sorry. But many of you heard me say, I promise we're going to look really great later, and I'm so proud of the project and how it's showing up. And um, I think it's really a, a gem. Um, we're, we're just thrilled. And um, much, much appreciation to the city of Healdsburg, who on Tuesday afternoon um, granted us the um, temporary certificate of occupancy. That TCO allowed me to be sitting here today. Yes, fake background, but I'm actually sitting in my office in Enzo Village. Um, so that it takes a village truly to create um, magical spaces, and we couldn't do it without the city Healdsburg. So thank you, Fire. Thank you, Building. <laughs> we appreciate you so much. Um, we are a 60 plus senior community. Um, we're the first uh, Zen inspired senior community um, in the country, and we are the greenest senior living community ever built. Um, within two years, we will have created 90 jobs at least in this area. And at the moment, we're on track. More than a third of our team members live right here in Healdsburg, and they've all committed to not take single occupancy vehicle trips to this campus. So we're biking, we're walking, we're taking the bus, we're carpooling, um, we're doing our, our part. Um, this project, uh, as I said, is the first Zen-inspired community in the country. It has a focus on mindful aging, the joys of nature, and sustainability. Those things all have a nice synchronicity with each other. Um, this has been a dream um, of people that came way before me um, after 10 years of planning. And many, many thanks and deep appreciation to the San Francisco Zen Center um, and Susan O'Connell, our visionary who, who dreamed up this idea, and the Kendall Corporation, um, another amazing nonprofit, but based out of the East Coast with a Quaker tradition. Um, those two created a powerhouse um, and brought this project um, to life in partnership with many of the people that we're going to be hearing about, um, hearing from today. Um, so as I said, this week we moved into our offices. Um, residents started to come and visit their residences, and, and some of them had placed reservations more than two years ago. Um, mm -hmm. So there, there are some of them um, devoting their life savings and imagining the last and best chapter of their life here, and they got to see it. Um, and it was emotional and, and really incredible to be a part of that. Um, those first seven people are going to move in on Halloween. 
Um, so I have my costume ready. <laughs> um, and then we're going to be continuing to move in residents in waves um, um, over the rest of this year and into um, 2024. And um, you can imagine that this is quite an undertaking. I don't think any time in the country in our category um, has anyone tried to bring in more than 100 residents in the fourth quarter of the year <laughs> during the holidays and the shorter days. So um, many thanks to all of you who send bottles of wine over because we're going to need it. Um, our project does have 221 independent residences um, and 54 assisted living and memory care residences. Um, what's unique about our project compared to some other senior communities is that you can move into our entrance fee based independent living and many times spend the rest of your life in that residence. Um, we're able to declare that your home and in partnership with some um, uh, better interpretations, quite frankly, by the state of California, bring to you the kinds of services that you may need as you um, advance in age and uh, have additional needs. So our team is here to provide care coordination and the hospitality that I think is the hallmark of the whole North Village uh, project. Um, and we're the connector um, for our residents to the healthcare services um, that they're going to need. We do not have skilled nursing um, on this project, and we won't ever have skilled nursing. Um, um, that reflects a trend in our industry that's um, providing the kind of experience at the end of um, a person's life that um, I think better matches the preferences and tastes of today's um, older, older adults. I'm really proud of how sustainable our project is. It's financed in part by California Green Bonds, first time that's ever um, happened, and we're held accountable. This is not a situation where we can in any way greenwash. We have to um, document and and be serious about our stewardship of water, electricity, um, and especially our carbon emissions. We're going to be very attentive to food waste, as we know that more than 40% of food is wasted and sent to landfill in the United States, and we're just bound and determined to change that trend um, here at Enzo Village. We're really, really excited that a large number of our residents have decided not to bring a second car. Um, those are bringing a vehicle are um, more than half of them bringing an electric vehicle. And some of them are deciding to bring no vehicle at all. And we're really, really excited that the conversation that we're having with them um, that is in conversation also with the city's um, climate mobilization um, uh, efforts is um, is you know, generating a good positive movement. I'm also really proud of the diversity of our team. Uh, we have first generation college students on our um, executive leadership team. Several team members are immigrants. We have team members who have built successful businesses from scratch and have earned PhDs and are published authors. So this is an unbelievable group of people bringing additional diversity to Healdsburg. And I couldn't be prouder um, to be a part of this. So that's a little taste of Enzo Village. Thank you, Rosemary. Uh, before we slip over to Ed, who's going to give us a little bit of information on what Appalachian's got going, which I assume is the hotel and some of the other projects. Does anybody have any questions for Rosemary? And if you do, you'd raise your hands so that we could see that, be great. If not, I'm gonna slip on over to Ed then. Ed? Actually, what? sorry, I didn't get off in time, but I was curious, um... Rosemary, it's Talia, on how different this is in terms of the stain sustainability from like a LEED platinum certified or something like that. Yeah, we're we're actually higher than that level. Okay. Um, because okay. of the requirements that we have. One example, um, we only have natural gas in two places in the entire project, the um, heated saltwater um, swimming pool and the commercial kitchen. And in both cases, um, we have already developed um, a a mission to um, move off of that. Um, when I completed my certification through the Stanford Graduate School of Business in Sustainability Leadership, my capstone was um, to throw down the gauntlet and see if we can, with solar um, and some other um, levers, um, make that transition in a five-year period of time. Our chef is excited to partner on this, um, which represents a real shift in um, 
uh, chefs um, uh, approaches to this. And I'm, I'm extremely proud of um, our executive chef, Kyle Evans, and his leadership in, in sustainability. And as Ed will talk about, um, a lot of the work that we're already doing in partnership with Appalachian is about leveraging our strength, our village, um, to bring solar faster and um, less expensively and with less friction uh, to this part of town so that we can advance those kinds of efforts. Okay, thanks. That's incredible. I know when we were certifying businesses a long time ago, when green became the new, you know, cool thing to do, it's very difficult to get those certifications. So congratulations. Thank you. All right. I see we have a question from Evelyn. Yes, good morning. Um, thank you for that report. We're excited about Enzo Village coming online. It's been a while. So, uh, but I wanted to ask a question about, you said something about never having nursing um, on site because that's the way the aging population prefers. I don't quite understand how that works. Could you explain that? Yeah. So skilled nursing is a, is a, um, profession that has a lot of honor. And I deeply respect the people who have spent their careers in um, licensed skilled nursing facilities. But there is a trend that began about 20 years ago, and it's accelerating now, which is recognizing that um, skilled nursing um, facilities are, are really a tough, a tough um, place. Um, a lot of people don't want to work there. A lot of people don't want to get care in that setting. And what they'd prefer to do is get care at home in an environment that feels comfortable um, for them. So Evelyn, what's what's starting to happen is the ability of home health and hospice agencies with whom we will have a close relationship, they will bring the technologies and the professionals to the uh, residences um, and provide a lot of those services um, right here on site. Now, it's true that if someone has a major surgery, um, they may need some recuperation time in a, a, a subacute or a, a skilled, very specialized facility. Those exist and they're wonderful. Um, take the example of uh, recovering from a stroke. Um, there, I would recommend to everyone that if that is the right place for you to be for a period of time to recuperate, to be there. We'll always... Um, Imagine, though, and hope for folks to return home to Enzo and to be able to kit out their residents to make it safe for them um, to um, enjoy the, the rest of their life at home. And in those few situations where I have seen a skilled nursing or convalescent care facility, it's been a separate facility in any event, right? I mean... Yeah, there are there are continuing care retirement communities in Sonoma County that include a skilled nursing um, component. Um, it's it's as I said, very challenging as um, a, a, a business model um, in in a lot of different ways, and it's it's creating some vulnerability for the category. Um, so the owners of our project um, chose not to include that feature, and that is a trend nationally. Yeah, yeah. I can understand that. All right. Anybody else have a question for Rosemary? If not, then now we'll slip over to Ed. Okay. Sounds thank you very good. Much, Rosemary. Thank you very much, Rosemary. Yeah. Thank you, Rosemary. And we're excited to have Enzo Village as our, our neighbor, uh, you know, on the, uh, the site. Uh, if you, uh, for those of you that are familiar with uh, the project and the construction that's been happening there, you see the buildings that are that are there on site now. That's Enzo Village, and then Appalachian is the uh, the hotel portion, and we're the portion that is uh, between Enzo Village and the hillside. That's our parcel. And then Kelly Comstock's on the line. Uh, she'll also be talking about the other residential components on the site and the retail uh, uh, areas that are that are there as well. So I'll focus on on the hotel. And uh, for a lot of you, Appalachian might be a new name. You've probably you know, heard about us a little bit uh, because we are based here in Healdsburg. Uh, we're a new hotel company, a new hotel brand that uh, was co-founded about five years ago by uh, some, some folks that I'm sure are familiar to everyone on the line, uh, Chef Charlie Palmer and uh, Christopher Hunsberger, longtime residents uh, here in the community. Um, of course, you know, Charlie Palmer, uh, you know, renowned chef, restaurateur, uh, you know, has his uh, you know, very famous restaurant, Dry Creek Kitchen. Uh, the charitable events, Pigs and Pino, Project Zinn, uh, you know, raised his family here in Hillsburg, you know, over the last 20 years. Uh, so, you know, we're very excited uh, to, to be doing what we're doing and have Hillsburg be our first hotel uh, to come out of the ground and, and open up and be the, the, the hotel to launch the Appalachian brand. 
Um, and then uh, Charlie's co-founder and his business partner, Christopher Hunsberger, again, I'm sure many of you know, uh, Chris had a very distinguished career, career with Four Seasons Hotels, uh, you know, was an operator with them, general manager, rose up to the ranks of president of the Americas and global people officer uh, for Four Seasons and really helped build them up, uh, you know, from a small organization uh, to, the, to the company that you recognize today. So we've got great co-founders and I can say that Healdsburg probably is the best place to work in the world because where else can you be sitting here in a meeting like this and then have one of your co-founders bring you a local pastry from one of, the, uh, from one of our favorite bakeries here in town uh, while you're on camera. So that just tells you about the kind of culture that we have and what we're all about. Um, Appalachian as a brand, um, our hallmarks are place defines us, people power us, and food connects us. So obviously when you've got uh, you know, Jeff Charlie Palmer as your CEO and co-founder and somebody like Chris as your COO and co-founder, you know, food and, and food done well and culinary is very important to us. So we really do focus on, uh, you know, the destinations where we're developing hotels, really what makes them so special, great food and beverage experiences for our guests, but also uh, people that are in the community. In fact, uh, the majority of, of, of our customers, the majority of the customers at any of Charlie's restaurants that are inside hotels, uh, come from people that live in the community, not uh, not just the people that are staying at the hotel. So we're very much connected to to the sense of place. Uh, culinary is uh, is our big focus, and then you know of course uh, the people. And I'll talk about some of the ways that that we engage local talent um, and really try and showcase it in a lot of ways uh, uh, in just a little bit. Um, locations, as I mentioned, we've got. Uh, you know, a number of locations under development, primarily in the Western United States right now. Um, Hillsburg is, has been under construction now for, for just a little bit. We are targeting an opening at the end of next year. That will be our, our first hotel to be built as part of the Appalachian brand. Uh, we do also have other projects uh, that are active in Sun Valley, Idaho, which is a great mountain resort destination. And then down in Pacific Grove, um, if you're familiar with uh, the Monterey Bay Peninsula, Fantastic location there. And then we have some other projects that we're working on in Sonoma County, um, Santa Barbara, kind of up and down the coast uh, uh, of the Western US. So you'll, you'll hear more from us, but Healdsburg is our home and, and you know we're, we're very excited about uh, the project that we have here. Uh, it's 108 guest rooms. Uh, we do have guest rooms and suites. Uh, it's a, a campus style. We've got the eight acres there, uh, like I said, between Enzo Village and the hillside. Uh, we have a signature Charlie Palmer restaurant that's being built. Uh, we'll be debuting more information about that. Uh, lobby bar and then a rooftop bar that we're very excited about. Um, I think it'll be the, the first rooftop bar in Hillsburg outside of uh, the town square. Um, and we're just finishing up the details on that. So there'll be, there'll be more to come there, but it, it's something that uh, there's already a lot of anticipation. Uh, we do have a, a spa and two pools at the property. You know, like I said, place for us and sense of community is very important. So, you know, we do anticipate that we will have uh, community access. Obviously, you know, we, we welcome everybody to the spa, but uh, we will also have community access to uh, uh, to our pool experiences. We really just want this to, to feel like a place that the community really embraces and, and can call their own. Uh, I, I mentioned community engagement. That is really important to us. In fact, it's a, a big part of our brand message. Uh, we have a, a program called Crafted at Appalachian, and we invite local makers and artisans to come into our hotels and interact with our guests. Uh, in fact, we've actually built physical spaces called maker spaces inside the lobbies of our hotels. And there are these glass walled rooms where we may have you know, a local coffee roaster come in and uh, interact with, with our guests and, and help them experience tasting coffee in a different way something informal like that, all the way up to, to you know, formal classes, ticketed events where people could come and learn from local experts. And we think that it's a great way to, to bring the local community in. Uh, it's also a great way to have them interact with visitors that are staying in the hotels and just a better way, a different way, a richer way to experience a destination. Uh, so we do have uh, some pop-up classes that we've been doing. Something that we do before we open up in any location is uh, you know, run a series of, of classes where we could start to, to get a little bit of feedback from the, the, the community, what types of classes are of interest. It helps us build our network of local makers and artisans, which you know, we're, we're always doing. Um, and then uh, we get to, to you know, have some fun and uh, you know, interact with, uh, with the attendees. It's always a, a great time, a learning event, but also great food and wine, as you can imagine, uh, 
uh, with, with a brand like ours. So we do have some upcoming classes. I could certainly talk about more, this more at the end, but uh, you know, we have uh, one that's uh, very interesting called Moss Wall Art. If you haven't seen this, it's a very cool project. That's October 21st at Rodney Strong Vineyards. Uh, if you wanna get a taste of the brand, um, holiday wreath making at the Setting Wines uh, in Bacchus Landing on November 29th and 30th. And then two new special classes that Chef uh, Palmer himself is going to lead uh, that we'll be announcing next week, uh, one in October and one in November. So uh, you can always check out our website, AppalachianHotels.com, or follow us on any of our social channels at Appalachian Hotels, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. Uh, I would encourage you to sign up for emails on our website. And if you are interested in the crafted programming, that's the way to kind of interact with us now before the hotel opens next year. Uh, just go to our website and there's a link there for crafted. You can learn a lot more than, than I can tell you today. And I just have to hop in here, Ed, and say I've had a, um, the pleasure of attending two of the crafted events. They're so fun. I recommend it to everybody else. And some of our Enzo Village residents showed up to the last one, um, the Sashiko Mending class. And it was really cool to see this idea of the formation of community in advance of the actual community and intergenerational um, collaboration and creativity. That's what it's all about. I'm really proud of your team for putting together that series. Thank you, Rosemary. That's the best endorsement we could get. <laughs> okay. Do we have any questions for Ed out there? Because if not, I see that Kelly has joined us. So we have Kelly Comstock Ferris, who's VP of Sales and Marketing for the North Village and Comstock Development. Um, Kelly? Hi. I apologize if my dog barks in the background. You know, she's been quiet up until it's my time to speak. She must have heard my name. Um, I am Kelly Comstock. And um, yeah, so we started working on the North Village project as um, Comstock Development um, just over 10 years ago. Um, Comstock Development is a family run company. Um, we started out in Southern California doing commercial and office buildings, and that evolved into doing um, full retail centers, um, grocery anchored centers all up and down um, Southern California coast. Um, that morphed into our housing division um, called Comstock Homes, where we have built communities all over California, um, including here in Healdsburg. Uh, we primarily focus on infill and redevelopment um, sites. We don't, we're not really looking at expansionist development. So um, the North, when the North Village site became available, it was perfect for us. Being a former lumber yard, it was a redevelopment site that is right up our alley. We've done redevelopment on former um, oil fields, um, fully mitigating them and making sure that they're environmentally correct. So this was, again, right up our alley, um, making sure that all of the site was fully mitigated and ready to transform into a new use for the community. Um, we really wanted to focus on housing in Healdsburg. It was the number one thing that we identified um, when looking at the site and being a home builder. We thought this was fantastic, um, a great way to bring more homes to the community. Um, at the time of purchase, the city was going through the NEEP process as well, the North Entry Area Plan. So we worked really closely with the council to make sure that we had the right uses and the right fits for this new community or neighborhood, as we like to call it. We're not building a new town. We're building a new neighborhood in Healdsburg at the North End. Um, we were introduced very early on to um, the Enzo team and worked very closely with them on all the entitlements. The original site was originally for legal parcels. So we were able to work with Enzo and work with the Appalachian team to create sizing on those parcels that really fit the needs for each one of the uses. Um, and then following under the NEEP um, and understanding the for market housing crunch here in Healdsburg, we were able to partner with Burbank Housing on one of the parcels to do our very low income um, component. And then the city passed, originally we had intended to do category C, which is missing middle rentals, but then the city passed um, an ordinance stating that category C could actually be for sale. So we went back to the council and we redesigned the project a little bit. And so now we will be bringing, um, let me just double check because this is all new. We are bringing 27 three-story townhomes that will be for sale in that missing middle category C income restricted um, 120 to 160 AMI category. Um, those will all be two, three and four bedroom homes with two car garages. So it's super exciting. It, it creates a, 
it creates a space in Healdsburg for that sort of missing middle buyer, for that first time buyer. Those homes will always stay in that category C. So somebody who buys in originally will not be able to sell it ever at market rate. It will stay in that category C um, area, always allowing new homeowners to be able to come in at that first time buyer rate. Um, and as I mentioned, we did partner with um, Burbank Housing. And so they are currently, they are currently the owners of their parcel and they are constructing with us, with their guidance, uh, 52 affordable housing units. Um, as soon as they are a little further along, then we will have more information on how people can go about applying for those units. Um, we are planning to um, go vertical on the affordable housing portion, um, sort of towards the end of the first quarter next year. It's supposed to be an El Nino year. So right now we're just making sure the site is fully, you know, secured and all water <laughs> runoff is mitigated properly. So we'll wait for it to dry out. And as soon as it's dry, we will be going vertical on that um, similar to, and that will be about a 12 to 14 month build out. Um, and similarly, we'll probably start around the third quarter on the townhomes as that's only about a 12 month build out. So everything, should be going vertical about the same time and should be ready, um, you know, towards the end of 2025 for full occupancy, which is absolutely exciting. Um, the other exciting part about the Burbank parcel is that um, underneath that, there is a pedestrian promenade and 12,000 square feet of retail. So once we are done on construction with that, Comstock is actually going to, we've condo mapped that and Comstock will actually take back the retail component of that and manage that pedestrian promenade in partnership with the hotel um, and manage that retail. So Burbank doesn't need to worry about retail. They just keep providing that affordable housing, but we'll make sure that the community benefit to the whole project, which is that pedestrian promenade and retail for the residents that live in the North Village, residents that live in Parkland Farms and you know out in Alexander Valley on the north end of town, have access to some services that you know they previously haven't had. Um, I've heard some rumors out in the world about what could be going in there. Um, as we are so far out right now, we do not have any specific tenants lined up, but all of the tenants that we have spoken with and that we've approached and all of the uses that we're looking at are first passes at local operators. Um, so we have been in talks with, you know, restaurateurs, bakeries. We are looking at bike shops. We are looking at hair salons, really things that will help benefit the people who live up in the North Village and the north end of town um, and continue to grow our community. We do have some operators that are looking for second locations that are already beloved here in Healdsburg. So it's exciting. Um, there's a very limited amount of retail up there, but we're really trying to curate a, you know, very beneficial, comfortable place that will be used. And that promenade will have fountains. We're looking at sort of like some kiosk options to put in like morning coffee or boba, um, just to really make it a vibrant part where people will be able to spend time, even if they don't live in the North Village community, they can come over there, they can get a cup of coffee, they can interact with the residents who live up there, visit their parents who are living in Enzo, um, just really make it a, a separate sort of destination for our local community to have some more space. Um, we're also building a perimeter trail that goes around the entire property. Um, currently, I think that trail is finished behind Enzo and Appalachian portions. Um, it will be fully complete um, behind the railroad tracks once the Burbank portion is done. So that will open around the same time that that housing does. Um, it, due to the railroad tracks, the, that trail will not technically connect to the Foss Creek Trail, um, but it will be ac accessible just off um, Box Heart Drive to the west um, as soon as you know the project is, is open. So that's exciting. Um, yeah, so I think that's, that's the most of it. I know I've heard some questions about our involvement in the firehouse as well. Um, and that we, um, our, our development portion was a financial obligation. So we are not actually building that. The city has already awarded a GC and is going vertical on that. Um, and our understanding is that that should be kicking off any day. So that's, that's also exciting. Um, boop, 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 boop. Um, 
there's been asked about parking up there. We have done extensive parking and traffic plans as well. Um, so there will be dedicated parking for the Burbank housing community. As I said, there will be garages and private parking for the townhome community. And there will also be um, public parking that will also include um, EV stations for public you know, use and visitors and to charge their electric vehicles. There will be bike stations and, you know, in line with what Rosemary was talking about, we've really tried to be thoughtful on making sure that this new neighborhood is accessible to the rest of Healdsburg, not just by vehicle, but walk, walking, biking and the like. So I think that's about it on my end on where we're at with the residential and retail components and all the public use. Oh, we also, I think Ed, Ed can talk a little further about it. The hotel will be building a grange and they will have a, a great lawn as well. And that grange will also have some public facing use that the hotel will manage for you know event spaces and farmer's markets and things like that, um, as well as the great lawn. So it really is a partnership between Enzo and um, Appalachian and Comstock to create community and create public spaces within all of these independent operators. That's wonderful. Very exciting project. I can, as a guy who's been here for like 46 years, seeing that go from, you know, the lumber yard that, or the, that it was to what your guys are doing and just basically everything else that's happened, obviously, is, is wonderful. And all the things you touch. That, yeah, it, well, it's really exciting, too, because, you know, one of the big conversations in Healdsburg is the affordability. And so um, every single housing use, which was our intention to put housing in Healdsburg, is a high need use. And Enzo is, you know, the senior community that we've desperately needed. And then all of the other residential uses are income restricted. So they really do make, you know, Healdsburg that much more accessible for those of us who live and work here. Right. All right. Anybody have any questions for Kelly? I want to say thank you to all three of you. You've done a wonderful job in giving us a presentation. And actually, the way it worked out with, you know, Rosemary starting first, since that project's already up and then moving through Ed and Kelly has been, uh, I thought, very helpful in just kind of understanding what's going on. So we we appreciate it. and want to thank you on behalf of the chamber and the city itself. Absolutely. All right. Any questions before I move away from the North Village project? If not, then I'm going to move over to Andrew. You can see you can give us an update if you would on what's happening at the city. I, I think actually Evelyn just raised her hand really quick. Sorry, Andrew. Oh, okay. Sorry, Evelyn. Yeah, sorry. I was late. I, I have trouble finding the raised hand feature on my computer somehow. But I just want to sure I know where it is. So it's good that you do. <laughs> I just I just wanted to add my thanks to uh, everyone and and especially to Kelly and her team for building the first ever middle income for sale product in in the city of Hillsburg and I know it was um, a struggle at some at some points but I'm really excited to see that and I just want to say thank you and I think the whole project is going to be such a wonderful uh, thing for our community and so Appalachia and you so thank you. I just wanted to add my my thanks to you. All right. Well, thank you, Evelyn. And thank you and Ron for everything you do. I mean, I know those city meetings aren't necessarily family friendly because I've been involved when Katie was, you know, city clerk. So we appreciate all the time and effort you guys put into the city. And of course, Andrew too. So we'll start segue over to Andrew. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Mark. Good morning, everyone. Andrew Sternfels, Assistant City Manager for the city. Uh, I think I, I'm just going to build on a couple of themes from this morning's conversation because there's been so much discussion around some great construction projects, some infill and housing development, sustainability and climate. And it actually really syncs up with a lot of the updates I, I wanted to share with the group this morning. So uh, you heard uh, mentioned from Kelly just a moment ago that we have begun construction on the fire substation project. Uh, they're doing a little earthwork there starting this week, uh, and you'll start seeing vertical construction there uh, pretty much now. Uh, so the construction team's ready to go and in place. We're really excited to get that project off the ground. Um, what it means is that between uh, the substation and the other projects that are either wrapping up or about to start, it's going to be a really busy part of town. 
uh, particularly for traffic, I think, with all the construction vehicles and supplies being moved in, especially when uh, residents start moving into Enzo. So we, I think we'll all ask for your patience and, uh, and good collaboration between uh, all the partners there so we can work that out the best we possibly can, given all the activity. But it is, all, it is a really exciting time for the, 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 both the North Village project and that, that whole area. Just, uh, so we're excited to get the fire substation going. Uh, on top of that, we also have out for bid right now the Foley Family Community Pavilion Project, uh, which is right behind me on City Hall here. Um, we're uh, really hoping to get some some positive results on, on the bidding process so we can move forward with that project. And really, depending on the rainy season and the construction start date, you might see activity there as late as this winter or uh, at the latest, depending on the rainy season, early spring. Uh, so we're excited to see that moving forward as well. And on top of that, we've just about finished a project at the Healdsburg Community Center where we've uh, basically completely remodeled and renovated two existing classrooms to turn into a preschool site that will be run by the YWCA. Uh, so we're just waiting on the playground equipment to be put in there. And we're hoping to have some uh, licensing decisions finalized soon so that we can move forward with starting a brand new preschool uh, early childhood education program at the YWC with run by the YWCA at the community center uh, within the next couple months. So pretty excited about all of that. Uh, on the sustainability front, a couple things to share. Uh, you may have seen we just received an award from the Sonoma County Bicycle Coalition uh, for the Foss Creek Trail Project, which has just created an awesome uh, class one bike lane for us through town, uh, extending north to south and creating a lot of connectivity for folks. Uh, so we're excited to receive that award. Similarly, we just yesterday posted the final draft of the city's first climate mobilization strategy. You can find that online at healdsburg.gov slash CMS. Um, you will see it in the document, the final draft, which is, it's a really long document. I would encourage you if you want to spend time to look at the implementation plan, which really covers the first three years uh, or the next three years, I should say, of actions the city is going to take uh, to help reduce our greenhouse gas emissions. I did want to note uh, for this group in particular, there are a couple changes to this final draft from the previous draft that were really driven by business community feedback. So I wanted to share two of those with you this morning. Actually, I'll share three. Uh, the first is we added specific language around the commercial reach code amendments that we will be pursuing with the next building code to allow for specific exemptions that would uh, have a substantial impact on economic development. Um, so this really came from feedback we got from the restaurant and hotel community around commercial kitchens. And uh, well, I think there, I'm, Thrilled to hear there's interest from folks like Rosemary and her team on getting away from uh, gas grills and commercial kitchens. We understand that you know making a change like that uh, citywide could have a pretty dramatic impact. So those look those are the kind of exemptions we will be looking to put forward in the new commercial reach code when that comes up in the next two years. And I wanted to highlight that because it, we really wanted to make this a process where the city was listening to the whole community about what their wants and needs were and trying to find a balanced approach to the climate actions we put forward. And this action was really, you know, this change was really in response to the feedback from the business community. The second item we made a change to was we initially included in the implementation plan uh, a shift to uh, looking at downtown paid parking, uh, which we received a bunch of feedback on uh, from the community that they were not in support of that. Uh, so go figure. Uh, so we are removing that from the implementation plan in the draft that will go before council. And then the third piece, which is minor, but also connected to this discussion on housing, is we've added some language in the plan around really trying to focus on denser development housing in the downtown core, in transit corridors, and in future planning areas as well, really trying to bridge the gap between um, building a community that's more walkable and bike friendly as, as part of the equation and recognizing that in the plan. So that's the latest on the climate mobilization strategy. It will go to council for consideration and uh, potential adoption at our next council meeting on the 16th. Um, and then just a couple other quick things to mention. We did have a housing forum last week, and I want to thank the chamber for the support of that. It was a housing forum for the business community to really talk about workforce housing. It's really great dialogue. For those of you who attended, thank you so much for being there. For those of you who didn't, if you would like a recap, I'm more than happy to spend some time with you or send you some notes or connect you with Stephen on that as well. Also coming up, we've got a couple important key city meetings. Uh, we've got on October 19th at the Senior Center, not the Community Center, the Senior Center at 6 p.m. We will be having a discussion uh, with, in collaboration and co-hosting with SMART about the station location for the future SMART station location. Um, so we encourage you to, to really spend some time if you can get out or send someone from your team to join that event. 
Uh, we'll have representatives from SMART in the city there to talk about the two current options we're looking at, both the depot and a downtown site, the pros and cons, and really, we're really there to just engage the public and get feedback. So we really encourage uh, everyone from the business community to attend or send someone if you can on that event. And then also on the 23rd, we will be having a workshop with the council on the diversity, equity, inclusion plan that we developed uh, in partnership with the Costa Latino Learning Partnership to really talk about next steps and what the city plans to do in terms of uh, actions we can take to make a more DEI-centered community and city team. Uh, and I think that's everything I had for today. Unless there's any specific questions, I'm happy to take them. And thank you for allowing me to be here this morning. Yeah, it's great. I do like the, the bicycle path that you guys have created, it, removing it from being right next to cars and you know all of the kind of dangers that that presents. I think it's been great. Uh, it is, I know it's used largely a lot, a lot as a walking path too. And during COVID, used a lot by a lot of different people. I think they found areas of the city that they'd never seen before. It's very, very good. Yeah, really appreciate everything you guys are doing. And the touch you bring to it, you and Jeff, been great, really. Very, very nice. Thanks, Mark. Yeah. Um, Anybody have any, okay, sorry. Sorry, Andrew mentioned our workforce housing forum. Um, we just posted the recording and I just put the link in the chat in case you want to um, watch it. It's about an hour and 45 minutes, but it's some great information and great presentations that we had from um, both Stephen and our speakers. Great. All right. Any questions for Andrew? If not, I know we're getting down to close to the end. Our next meeting is two months out. Is that right? Yes. It is. It'll be December, the first Thursday, which actually I believe is December 7th. Okay. A day that'll live in infamy. Is that the one? I forget. Anyway. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Uh, and thank you, especially for the people from North Village who, you know, did a wonderful presentation bringing us up to date on where we're going and what we've been seeing out there and what we can look forward to seeing. I uh, appreciate all of that. And um Everybody else who attends, we, we appreciate. And the chamber for putting this together and, and, you know, kind of presenting for this city, as we've discussed before, something I don't think you find other places where the city and its population can get together in one place and kind of talk about things that are happening and have questions answered. It's really, really awkward. Great opportunity. Thank you. Talk Thank to you guys. You. See you guys in two yeah. months. Bye-bye.